Out goes Mubarak, in come the generals. Do we really think the army will bring democracy to Egypt? Used to acting with impunity, we hear what the army's been up to, even in the last few days. They hit me with rods, then tortured me with electric current through my head. It hurts most when your hands are tied behind your back. You jerk when the current comes and your wrists get cut. I'll be talking to a minister in the new government about whether we can believe a word the army says. They were on the streets in Iran today as well. Can the United States succeed in spreading more dissent there? The singer Plan B broke free from a culture of low achievement in his working class area of East London. Why don't more boys manage to do so? We should recognise who these kids are from an early age that, uh, that live in these, these bad uh, family environments and we should take them out of comprehensive school where the teachers really couldn't care less about them. We'll ask whether too little is expected of poorer boys in schools. The author, Michael Moore Pergo, goes into Gaza to see for himself how children experience an adult's war. Out there on the wasteland, I hear screaming and shouting. Moments later, a donkey cart comes rushing by, a young kid lying bleeding in the back. Michael Moore Pergo is here to debate with a friend of Israel. The ripples from the extraordinary overthrow of the Egyptian president continue to spread. The so-called revolutionary government in Iran decided that while it supports the demonstrations in Egypt, it doesn't like them so very much when, like today, they're happening at home, so sent out the police to crack skulls. The government in Bahrain has opted instead to dish out $3,000 to every family. In Egypt, everything hangs upon whether the new military government can be trusted to honour their promise of democracy and whether the new order will really dismantle the old dictatorship. Our reporter Tim Huell has followed the protest from the start. A police state has fallen and the police, not surprisingly, aren't too happy. You might expect them, for decency's sake, to lie low for a while, but no. This weekend, a force that kept Egypt in order through intimidation, arbitrary arrest and torture came out to complain that it had been underpaid for its valuable services. Most people thought that the police were the villains of this revolution, but already here they are, back on the street, saying that they are victims too, demanding their rights. I only get 500 Egyptian pounds a month, and 450 goes in rent. How can I live on 50 pounds? That's why I have to help myself get anything I can on the side. For one extraordinary moment, it appeared that the two forces which buttressed Mubarak for decades, police and army, might come to blows with one another. But then tempers cooled, because of course, both were on the side of the revolution, weren't they? <laughs> We admire and respect every mother who's lost her son or husband in the protests because the people and the police are joined hand in hand. Here at Cairo's prosecutor's office, they're dealing now with many cases that cast doubt on that. Tariq Khatib's brother Mustafa was shot dead by police as he took part in a protest march on January the 28th. He's not convinced that Mubarak's police were always simply carrying out orders. They be officers, police officers, because they have connection. So they didn't have money. Why you wanted to keep on job and you kill people? Go for another job. On Tahrir Square, cockpit of the revolution, those who wielded placards now wield brooms. Model citizens who believe that together they can clean not just these pavements, but all Egypt of the corruption and abuse that's plagued it for so long. It is not impossible. It's easy to clean Egypt. The whole of Egypt? Yeah. Everything in Egypt? Yes, everything. Because all uh, people in Egypt love Egypt uh, so much. As we clean the street now from what happened, so we'd like the clean comes to all parts of the, uh, the government. Euphoria is still almost universal, but dismantling Egypt's machinery of fear will be no simple task. 
it's now become normal for your average criminal investigations police officer to believe that the way of resolving a case, even if it's theft, um, is to torture, to extract a confession, to close the case. Not a single state security investigations officer has ever been convicted of torture, even though they are the ones uh, responsible for torturing political prisoners and responsible for enforced disappearances. As for the military, it's now the self-proclaimed guardian of the people's rights. Today, it promised a referendum within two months on changing the constitution to allow for free elections. But the military also guarded Mubarak. It controls a sizable chunk of Egypt's economy. Its boss, 75-year-old Field Marshal Tantawi, greeted warmly on Tahrir Square last week, was described in a not very diplomatic cable obtained by WikiLeaks as aged and change resistant. When the tanks first rolled onto the streets, what seems like an age ago now, but is only actually just over two weeks, the protesters welcomed the military and argued that they could trust it. And so far, that trust seems to have been repaid. When the army last took over here, back in 1952, under Colonel Nasser, it ushered in a dictatorship which lasted in effect until last Friday. This time, most people say it's different because it's the people who are setting the pace of change. And yet in practice, very few people actually know what the army's thinking. But behind this door, there's a group of activists who may now have gained an insight. These young campaigners, who were under attack from government thugs just the week before last, are now reliving the scarcely believable moment yesterday when two generals, at least twice their age, invited them to a meeting to discuss Egypt's future. Some dared to ask why the army was letting a corrupt government stay in power. But at a press conference afterwards, they insisted the negotiations went well. Ahmed Douma has been detained 65 times and of course tortured. He's still only 22. But if the generals found him an odd new bedfellow, they bit their mustachioed lips. They treated us with respect. They appreciated that every side has to be in the dialogue, especially since we are in a position of power now, power given us by the revolution. But some from the square are less sure about the army's intentions. Uh, the same government is still in power. What I've uh, prophesied uh, just a couple of weeks ago that Egypt could turn to another, another Argentina is a pos still a possibility. On this very down-to-earth Cairo street, they're proud to have their own poet. Rami Yehia has just presented me with his latest slim volumes. But neither his sensitivity nor his revolutionary zeal impressed the army when it detained him during the protests, along with many others, calling him a spy. This only ten days ago. They hit me with rods, then tortured me with electric current through my head. It hurts most when your hands are tied behind your back. You jerk when the current comes and your wrists get cut. Though the revolution's now won, he wouldn't dare bring a case against the military. We still aren't a country of democracy or civil rights in the way that France became back in the 18th century. What the army wants most now is for Egypt to get back to work. And Cairo has largely returned to its pre-revolutionary chaos. But its people, they say, have changed forever. After all the tumult of the last three weeks, they perhaps won't allow everything to be business as usual. Well, earlier this evening, I spoke to the Egyptian finance minister, Samir Radwan. I asked him why we should believe that this military government is going to be any better than the last military government. This uh, government, whatever it is, has to change uh, to respond to what has happened. I mean, what has happened is colossal by, by any standard, and therefore any government that... Uh, uh, that would like to, to serve has to be up to, to the task. So it will have to be different. The expectations are high. Uh, people now know uh, how to express themselves. And any government that uh, would like to be met by approval 
uh, has to act and act quickly. But the experience of history is that you've had decade after decade of military government. How can we have any confidence that once they've got the demonstrators off the streets, this government will be any different to the previous ones? This is a transition period. And our task is really to uh, lead Egypt into a smooth transition to a peaceful uh, state of uh, democracy where institutions could be rebuilt, uh, laws could be changed. But we know from leaked cables from the American embassy that General Tantawi is considered aged and resistant to change. Well, you see, I think he, I would talk about the army and how the army has protected Egypt from descending into the chaos uh, scenario. So that is, that's in itself, this is a big achievement. That's not a mean achievement, believe me. And the people, the people like it very much. Uh, and they have, they trust the army. They have confidence in the, they have confidence in the army. Uh, so, and then, you know, we have many players now. We have, of course, the, uh, the high command of the army to uh, keep the country together. But we have the opposition parties. We have the youth of the 25th of January. Uh, and no obstacles in the sense that the parliament, the senate have been dissolved. The constitution has been suspended. So I think it, it, there is a new dynamic. And I really would appeal that we understand this dynamic and help it. Help it through to carry the country out uh, of, of, what, of that uh, state of sclerosis into a dynamic phase. You do believe that this is an administration which will be willing to see things like the right to a fair trial, the right to a free press, the right to free trade unions and the like? Yes, I was just this morning discussing uh, the freedom of association uh, possibilities, which I, I think would be a great, a great change. Uh, there will be... Uh, free and fair uh, elections. My hope and wish is that we should involve those people of the 25th uh, of January in the dialogue, in whatever change is going to happen. They are the ones who uh, short-circuited uh, what many people have been asking for for 30 years. They did it in 20, uh, in 20 days. Chapeau to them. So now we have to involve them in, in this process. They are the guarantee the guarantors of this uh, process. So the emergency laws are definitely going to end? That's, that's for sure. This raises, of course, a very interesting question about your own position. You were appointed by President Mubarak. Um, do you worry about the legitimacy of your own role in government? The demonstrators today had a slogan, uh, which goes to say that... Uh, you know, for a change. The, the Minister of Finance is the most popular minister they had. And that's not a populist thing. I know what I'm doing. I know why I accepted this job, is to help this transition. I don't really, it doesn't bother me much. I don't, I don't spend sleepless nights to think whether I'm there next week or next month. I have a job to do. I'll do it to my best. Mr. Erdogan, thank you very much. Thank you. The infection, exhilaration, call it what you will, of discovering that despots can be toppled, spread to Yemen, the Gulf and Iran today. Each had its own distinct complexion and each met its own distinct response. Richard Watson is here. Let's start with Iran. How much support was there for the demonstrations? Well, difficult to say precisely, of course, because the mainstream news organizations, including the BBC, don't have a, have a presence there at the moment. But uh, these mobile phone images have been uh, posted today, if we can uh, see them now. And um, they are showing here, it seems, protesters on the streets of Tehran burning a flag of uh, the supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali uh, Khamenei. Uh, varying reports of, you know, perhaps up to several thousand protesters on the streets. Again, difficult to get a confirmation of this. I've just come off the phone just recently to a distant in London who's in direct contact with some of these people. He says the protests are going on tonight um, and are focused around the university. It's clear that some people there have been um, shouting death to, to, to the dictator. 
a, a reference obviously to President uh, Ahmadinejad. Um, but the police and security apparatus in Iran have clamped down very much indeed. And what's the link between those protests and other protests and 